Hello everyone, this is Dr. Zaidi. Welcome to my YouTube channel ZTube. In this video, I'll be discussing about constrained resources, also known as production bottleneck or scarce resources. So what are constrained resources? A constrained resources are the limited resources that can restrict company's ability to satisfy demand. It's a production bottleneck. It's this resource that is scarce, right? You know, a general example from our daily life is the time. Time is a scarce resource, right? You cannot have more than 24 hours in a day, no matter what. You cannot have 25 hours a day. You cannot work 25 hours a day. So for every company, for every human being in the planet, the time is a bottleneck. The time is constrained. The time is scarce, right? So similarly, companies have various constraints, whether they could be financial constraints, they don't have enough funds available uh, to satisfy demands. Maybe they don't have enough labor force available to satisfy demand. Maybe they don't have enough capacity to satisfy demand, or they don't have enough time available to satisfy demand. So there could be various reasons why companies are unable to satisfy demand, especially in the peak seasons or when the demands are high. So in those cases, when you have limited resources and you are unable to satisfy all the demands that exist, what product should you produce, right? You should produce a product that provides you the highest contribution margin per unit of a constrained resource. Or you can say that the highest contribution margin per unit of a scarce resource or a per unit of a production bottleneck. So what you're basically doing in that case is you are trying to produce a product and sell a product that best use the constrained resource, right? That has, that maximizes company's profitability by maximizing the use of that constrained resource in the best possible way. Okay. Theory of constraint says that binding constraints can limit companies' profitability, right? And in order to uh, get that highest level of profitability, if you want to maximize that profitability, what you should do is you should produce a product that gives you the highest contribution margin per unit of a bottleneck, all right? So what do you do is usually you calculate a contribution margin, and then you divide by whatever the constant resources, whether the resource is in hours or resources in a pounds or it's, it's an area, whatever is the constant resources, you divide by that constant resource and that will give you, you know, the idea of which product provides you the highest contribution margin per that constraint resource. And whichever provides you the highest contribution margin per constraint resource or production bottleneck, that is the product you should produce first and sell first, right? Now, there are various ways you can rela relax the constraint or relax the uh, production bottleneck. You can increase the capacity. If capacity is the problem, uh, you know, and you cannot produce more, then you can increase the capacity and increasing in capacity from 20,000 to 40,000 units may be able to satisfy a demand for higher demand. Or if you can increase the further capacity, you can also do that if you have funds available, right? You can outsource sometimes, right? If you cannot handle everything in-house, then you can outsource some of the existing demands and you can buy from the outsource, um, you know, from the companies, the outsider companies, even within the United States or outside the United States, offshoring, right? That's very common nowadays. So you can either outsource or offshore some of the operations and you can bring the product in and you can satisfy uh, the demand, excess demand. Or you can work overtime, right? If the company is already not working 24 hours time, it's just an eight hour shift they are working or 12 hour shift, then they can increase the time and that can, and that way they can uh, satisfy some additional demands. Or they can retrain employees, right? Provide them training and you know, make them more efficient. So instead of producing 100,000 units a day, now they are more efficient. They can produce 120,000 a day, right? So the retraining and uh, making the environment more efficient can also in satisfy some demand, some excess demand. 
also reducing the non-value added activities can also have a positive impact on profitability and positive impact on satisfying demand. So for example, if your warehouse for raw material is 50 miles away and every time you have to uh, you know, bring raw material to your work in process department, you will have to call them or submit the requisition order online and then you know it's a 50 miles drive so it takes you know an hour or two hours to get the raw material that's a non value added activity you, that you are performing because you may be halting operations until you receive the raw material especially in the cases when you have the immediate need so on those cases if you move your warehouse close to your work in process department maybe it takes you five minutes to transfer raw material to your work in process department that way you can not only save time but you can also save money by not having transported materials from 50 miles away so any sort of non-value added activities can be avoided uh, to um, increase the profitability and uh, release the constraints so let's go with the example here. C Rosa Incorporated manufactures three kinds of wines, B Rosa, C Rosa, and D Rosa. Due to the high demand of its wines, Z is able to sell all the wines it manufactures. The production process includes a bottling process, which is a production bottleneck. Some information for wines production is provided below. So you have three wines, B Rosa, C Rosa, and D Rosa. The sales price of each wine is provided, and the variable cost for each wine is provided. And then the bottling hours, which is a production bottleneck, is provided. It says the bottling hour per unit for B Rosa is five, C Rosa for four, and D Rosa for two. So it's faster to produce D Rosa than C Rosa, and it's faster to produce C Rosa than B Rosa. However, B Rosa provides um, more sales revenues, $25, and D Rosa only provides $15 of sales revenue. So the question asks you prioritize the production of wines to maximize these profitability. Solution here shows that B Rosa, B Rosa's sales price is $25, C Rosa's $20, and D Rosa's is $15 and their variable costs per unit are 13, 11, and $9 respectively. So the contribution margin for B Rosa is $12, C Rosa is $9, and D Rosa is $6. If management doesn't know about the production bottleneck, then they are going to end up producing B Rosa first and sell B Rosa uh, first, because it seems like here, just looking at contribution margin, that B Rosa gives the highest contribution margin per unit, which is 12, where D Rosa gives only $6. C Rosa is, on a, is $9, somewhere in between B Rosa and D Rosa. So therefore, in order to make $12, they have to sell two of D Rosas, whereas they can just sell one B Rosa and they can make $12. So the management will decide that, oh, we are gonna sell B Rosa first because this is giving us the highest contribution margin. However, if they have a knowledge about the bottling hour, which is the production bottleneck, what they would do is they would divide the contribution margin by the bottleneck hours. So in this case, B Rosa requires five bottling hours and C Rosa four and D Rosa two. So we divide their um, variable in their contribution margin by the bottleneck hours and we'll get $2.4 for B Rosa, $2.25 for C Rosa and $3 for D Rosa. So D Rosa, which looks like was giving the least amount of uh, profit in terms of contribution margin is the most profitable for the company. It gives company $3 per bottleneck hour which is more than B Rosa's, which was originally the number one in terms of contribution margin per unit. However, in profitability wise, based on their bottleneck hours, so they have only $2.40 contribution margin per bottleneck hour. So in that case, if we rank which product we should produce first, then D Rosa should be produced and sold first followed by B Rosa, and then number three was the middle one, C Rosa. And that way company can make profits.
Okay. However, you need to look for the subjective con uh, consideration. Sometimes the products are uh, a complement for each other, right? And if you have, if they have to buy D, then they have to buy C. Otherwise, you know, D is useless. In those cases, you will have to produce both products, right? This is a wine example. So the this this in this case, they are not complement for each other. But in cases like when you are producing um, a coffee and the sugar goes with it or a creamer goes with it or a tea goes with it, then you may end up producing a complement product. Or if you're producing a printer and then the cartridge goes with it, then this is a complement product. So you cannot just keep producing printers, 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 and not producing cartridge. You're not even thinking about it just because it's not profitable. Or you just keep you know, producing cartridges because cartridges give you more profitability printers down, so you stop producing uh, printer, then you just keep producing cartridges. Again, it's not gonna give you profitability. So if it's a complementary product, then you have to uh, think uh, qualitatively, not just quantitatively. Otherwise, production bottleneck can maximize the profitability by producing the product that gives the highest contribution margin per bottleneck hours. Thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe my channel for live updates.